Hello everybody, this is Haley with the Lowell Public Library and this is our YA program for this week. We are going to be learning about how to do dot painting. Now for this program I'm going to be doing it a little bit differently. Instead of using paints to do this project, I'm going to show you guys how to do it with markers. But the same technique works both ways. So the first thing that you're going to need obviously is your uh, coloring utensil, paints, markers, crayons, whatever you're using to try this technique out, and something obviously to work on. For this one I'm going to be using a color sheet uh, rose. So if you're interested in learning how to dot paint, please stay tuned. Alright, so for this project what I'm going to do instead of using paint, I'm going to use markers. So for this I'm going to use three different colors of marker. Um, you can do this with similar colors, so if you have a light blue, a dark blue, a medium blue, something like that you can use. Um, I'm going to be using some Crayola markers and some you know, generic style markers, and this is going to be the template that I'm using. Now you can draw whatever you want, and you'll use the same exact technique that you would with any other style of painting. Um, the first thing that you'll do is figure out where your darkest spots are going to be and where your lightest spots are going to be. And then you'll decide which color you want to go with. So for this one, I think I'm going to start out with this color, this being my lightest color of the three. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to go ahead and take my marker and I'm going to figure out, let's say I want to start with this petal right here. What I'll do is realize that this line is going to be my darkest spot. So what I'll do is I'll put a whole bunch of dots super close together. This gives the illusion of a shade. As I'm going away from that dark spot, I'm going to start spacing out my dots a little bit more. Kind of making it more of a random pattern. And I'm going to do this throughout this corner and along this line here and then we'll come back when I have the next color. Alright, so now that we have this spot all done, I'm going to go ahead and select my next color. For this one, I'm going to go ahead and use this regular plain old marker. And I'm going to do almost the same exact thing, but this one I'm going to do a little bit less as I go out. So instead of coming out all the way to the edge, what I'll do is I'll pick a spot, so let's say here, where I'm not going to put any more dark spots through, or if I do, it'll be far and few between. So again, we're just going to continue on doing small little dots throughout this whole thing. Alright, so once you have that done, we're going to go ahead and switch on to our final color. And for this one, what I'm going to do is even a little bit more different. I'm going to go ahead and make bigger dots, so you guys can really see those dots in there. And I'm not going to go all the way up again, but I'm going to go even further back, keeping these bigger spots to just along that dark point. Just like that. Super simple, super easy. So now what this does is it gives the illusion that as this item is becoming 3D and it's curling into, you know, this part would be closest to the inside, so it would be the darkest. As the outside comes through, it'll be getting lighter. So let me go ahead and I'm going to use some camera magic and switch over to a almost completed project. Alright, so, camera magic later. You guys can see a little bit better on how those fold out onto each other, and there is definitely some areas, and you can always go back in if you notice somewhere where it's a little bit, you know, you want it a little bit darker, a little bit more. You can always add more spots in. The important thing is, when you're doing this, is that the closer together your spots are, so spots like that are going to be darker than spots like that. 
you're going to need to remember that if you're doing really big spots, they're going to appear darker than if you're doing teeny tiny little spots. So it's all about con putting them together and creating, you know, something that makes a pattern. And you can do things like this where, you know, you have areas like this where maybe you want that. You can start with your darkest color. You can start with your lightest color. You can start with your in-between color. It's all about alternating between the different colors that you have in order to create the picture. So you go through, you add in different layers, add in different brush styles if you're using paint. The important thing if you're using specifically paint is that you want to make sure that you're giving enough dry time so you're not blending your colors in together and that you are still getting that spotted effect. So let me go ahead and I'm going to zoom in real quick so you guys can get a better look at what exactly this looks like. All right, let's try to focus there. Alright, so you guys can really see how many more spots there are right in here versus somewhere out here where the light would be hitting it a lot more. So play with it. Use different techniques. Try different things. Um, one reason I say always try and start with a coloring sheet or something similar to that, especially when you're learning, is it does make it easier on you to being able to see what kind of patterns you like, if there's a certain style you like more of whether you start with light or you start with dark. It's a good, quick, easy way to do that versus doing something original where you don't want to mess it up unless you have copies of it. So, I hope you guys enjoyed today's program, um, and I will see you guys in next week's video. Have a great day, guys.